Hey kids, good to see you guys again. I'm Elijah, the prophet, remember me? The one who solo boloed 850 false prophets in Mount Carmel Stadium? Well, at the end of last week's story, God told me to find myself a protege, a student, or a disciple. And voila, this is him, Elisha. I know, I know, our names are kind of confusing. I am Elijah, this is Elisha. Elijah, Elisha. Ja, 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 sha, sha, sha. Hey, teacher Elijah, who are you talking to? I don't see anyone. Oh, my good student, don't worry about it. Anyway, I have some news for you. As you know, we are like Joshua and Moses. I have taught you enough, and you have been a good, faithful prophet. So I was thinking, it's about time for me to go. Go where, my teacher? To meet with God. What are you talking about, my teacher? You mean you mean like you're gonna die? No, not like that. But I do mean it when I say I'm meeting God. Speaking of which, here comes my ride. Uh, wait a minute, teacher Elijah, is that a whirlwind? You're seriously telling me you're going to ride a whirlwind? Exactly, my son. So long. Farewell. I am gone with the wind. Man, you are too young to know this movie and get this reference. Till we meet again, my friend. Wow, amazing. My teacher is too, just too cool. On with the wind. What on earth was my teacher talking about? Anyway, what should I do now? Hey, Elisha. My lord, here I am. Now that Elijah is gone with the wind, from now on you are the man to be my messenger to the northern kingdom's Israel. So your job for now is to go warn the nation of Israel against worshipping false gods. Since Israel wasn't being faithful to me, there's which one true God. You need to go remind them that I am their God, the Lord of life. Hey kids, Elijah here. I'm with God right now, and I'm going to be the narrator of today's story. Did you miss me? Haha, <laughs> okay, here we go. During the time of Elisha, Israel was going to war with the nation of Aram a lot, a Gentile nation. What's a Gentile? A Gentile is someone who was originally not part of God's chosen people, so basically anyone who is not a part of the Israelites. At the time, the commander of the army of Aram was a man named Naaman. He was a well-respected man who had won many victories for his country, but sadly, he also had leprosy. Who knows what leprosy is? Well, leprosy is a horrible skin disease that can cover and eat away at the body. Like people with leprosy might lose a part of their body, and they will die in great pain. Let's go to Naaman's place and see how he is doing. I have leprosy, an incurable disease of my time. Why me? Why? Who can heal me? I want to be healed. Hey husband. I knew this girl who knew this girl who knew this girl who knew this girl from Israel who believes in the one true God. She told me their prophet in Samaria, Israel, could cure your leprosy. Seriously? A prophet in Israel? Let me ask the king of Aram to write a letter of recommendation for me. My king, could you write me a letter to the king of Israel so they would help me? Okay. Thank you, King. Let's go to Israel and be healed. Some time later. Hello, King of Israel. This is a letter of recommendation from the King of Aram. We want you to find a cure for my leprosy. What? I'm tearing my clothes now. That is how I express my anguish emotion. I'm stressed, 
sad and angry for I don't know how to cure leprosy. Only God knows. But I'm not that close to my God. Oh, what do I do? This is bad. If I can't help you, then the king of our men will be mad at me. And our countries might have to go to war again. You rent your clothes off when you feel angry? Wow, are you like a fan of the Incredible Hulk or something? Hey, my king, no need to be so upset. And no need to tear off your fancy clothes. My master, Elisha, knows what to do. Ah, yes, Elisha, the prophet man. What is his message to me? Of course. That is why I'm here. God told my master everything already. Just ask General Naaman to come to my master's place and he will get the help he needs. This way, Naaman will know Elisha, my master, is the prophet of the one true God. This is great. Let's go straight to Elijah's home. Horses, chariots, and a lot of people. Let's go. A little longer than a few minutes later. Prophet man Elisha, I am Norman, and I'm here. Mr. General, listen. My master said, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River, and you will be cleansed. What? Are you kidding me? I have traveled a long way to meet this prophet man, and he would not even come out to see me. Why, Jordan River? Are not the rivers of Damascus better than any of the waters in Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? I am an important general of Armin, and I am a man of standards and expectations. You know what, if Elisha thinks he's too good for me, then fine, I'm going home. Hey, Master, I know you are upset, but think about it. It won't hurt to give it a try. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah, since I've already came all this way, I might as well try washing myself seven times. Two moments later. Here I come, Jordan River. Cannonball. Wow, this is amazing. Look at my skin. My skin is completely restored. My skin is a smooth as a baby. This God of Israel is amazing. He is really the Lord of life. Let me go back to the prophet man, Elisha. Ten seconds later. My great prophet, Elisha. Now I know that there is no God in the world like the one in Israel. The God is the only one true God. Well said, my general. Your declaration showed it wasn't just your body that has been transformed. Your heart has been transformed too. This healing has made you believe in the one true God, the Most High God. You have received a new life physically and spiritually as you trusted in God. Hey kids, narrator Elijah back at it again. Today, we see that through the healing of General Naaman, God showed his people that he alone is the Lord of life. Naaman, a Gentile, was able to know God through his healing the lesser healing of his leprosy, and the greater healing of his soul. This happened many years ago, but even today, God continues to offer us true life. That's why he sent his son, Jesus, to live and die and rise again so we might know him. When Jesus came to earth, he said it was so that we might have life for the full. He is the Lord of life, and he offers us the fullest life that we could ever ask for. There is no other place in this world where we can receive life except through him. Believe in Jesus, my friends. Believe in Jesus.